so okay so um where am i getting my head right so a very good day ladies and gentlemen uh, i can't get my words out today um <laughs> so a lot of us have heard uh, by the way you don't need to know all the answers john this is not a quiz <laughs> no and i'm i'm the first one to say i don't know if i don't know <laughs> yeah snap but a lot of us have heard of a four square okay now forgetting all the jiggery pokery that goes inside i'm led to believe that when it is so i'm just going to write put dots here okay this is uh, a four square i mean i'm in a helicopter looking down at mm -hmm. these four antennas that i believe i mean i'm just playing around john but i believe the distance between these is probably about a quarter of a wave absolutely right? And I think if I'm trying to go this way at, mm -hmm. or that way, I don't I can't remember, but at some point in time, right, because there's four bits of coax from some sort of weird control box, which we'll have a play with in a minute, if you like. But uh, the phase angle, I, I believe one of them's got zero. These two have got 90, mm -hmm. and that's got 180, yep. I think. Absolutely. Yep, that's it. Is that fundamentally a four square? Yep, fundamentally it's four square. Now there's different ways of doing it, but for yeah. you know, we, if you want the, four directions, the, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, because um actually I think Chrisman developed an eight way, didn't he? An you eight way. The, yeah. You sent me the, the thing. Okay, so we will have a control box somewhere, probably in the middle here, mm -hmm. which I am certainly lost on because <clears throat> John's <laughs> John sent me about, I don't know, 40 page PDF or something. He went, Oh, here's the answer, right? <laughs> I got to about page 18 and thought, I can't do this. <laughs> well, the, math, can't. the math gets a little bit. It's like bloody Greek. Anyway, mm -hmm. so we've got this control box in the middle, and then we've got a very particular set of coax lines here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've got your radio over here and, and feed it. Mm -hmm. So if you just walked into somebody's antenna field and they went oh and there's the four square you would just see the box you would see the four coax lines and i think there might be a couple of delay lines i can't i just can't remember how they do it oh no not necessarily because they can do it all inside the box yep now how much research do you think you've had to do before you go do you know what i think this is starting to dawn on me now <laughs> it's, it's been a good bit of reading and and you know um, Rolly and i talked a while back and he actually yeah. came up with a pretty good design for a four square okay um, but um yeah the commercial four squares that control box is is pretty elaborate when you when and when you break it down into parts and pieces it's it's not that bad uh -huh. but understanding how they got there is, yeah. is the real trick <laughs> so most of them use what's called a hybrid coupler and yes. um, it's a series of transformers Okay, um, and then they use another transformer, which will give you 180 degrees of phasing. So um, there's a couple ways to skin the cat. Um, yeah, there's a couple different versions. DX Engineering has their own version. Comtech has a version. Yeah, um, you know, and the big thing with any of these is you don't want to switch these things while you're um, transmitting. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, because you'll be replacing parts pretty quickly. <laughs> but you have, a, you have a series of LC circuits, tuned circuits in there, and yeah. a set of transformers um, yeah. that balance and divide the current all properly. So um, you can use auto transformers. You can use a hybrid coupler. You can use phase inverters. All these different tricks. The, the, the real thing to know is how to make them all work together. Okay? Yeah. Um, and, again, the math gets pretty complex. Um and I've got an engineering degree, so um, I had to go back to school to learn some of the math. But again, if you're going to do this, I mean, there's people who use vacuum to uh, vacuum rel uh, vacuum capacitors and vacuum relays to make these things work more efficiently. Yeah, um, it's a series. You're going to have a you're going to have a series of relays in there that are going to switch the the um, the effective delay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So, and you're going to have all all those different bags of tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so not so we're after these delays. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, is that is that all we're after, or actually a lot of this is to do with a match? So the the hybrid coupler and the um, phase 
inverter are for the direction, the directivity of it and um, the type of beam you get out of it. Okay. Mm. The LC circuits are going to help you with the match. Okay? okay. And if you look at the design, they also have a dummy load attached to them. Now, I've always wondered what that was for. And that's basically you get some stored energy in there and it dumps uh-huh. to the dummy load. It's just got to go somewhere. Yeah, it's got to okay. go somewhere. So you dump it to the dun- dummy load. Yeah. Um, so if you look at, you know, if you go out to DX Engineering and look at their four square box, you know, yeah. they'll have the connection for all four of the TX coming in and then they'll have a dummy load yeah. uh, feed on it. And that's, that's basically where it goes. Um, yeah. Again, you cannot, you can, you can build a four square using, you know, just the ley lines, but is it going to work? Yeah, it'll probably work, but not very efficiently. I mean, yeah, okay. you can make anything work. It's going to radiate. But how much how much value you're going to in the right working. direction? <laughs> yeah, exactly in the right so, direction. I mean, the, the real advantage to the real advantage to Foursquare, I mean, you've got some gain. You've got this mm-hmm. tremendous front to back, though, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah, you get a really tight cardioid pattern. Better than all the other stuff we've played yeah. with. Seventeen, twenty, twenty-five dB of isolation front to back. Um, you know. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing, and I've seen some yeah. of those where, you know, like we were talking an eight way where you're firing off the ends yeah. of the thing too. So um, the N one is the end fire one eight way is a little more complex than what you're dealing with with a standard four square. Um, and I I hadn't gone all the way down the rabbit hole on that one as yeah. regards to how it's all built inside. I've seen the the logistics of it, and yeah. again it takes a while to, to understand exactly what they're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, yep. Tremendous. Okay. So the advantage of four square is, uh, is this fantastic uh, front to back, which makes it look on paper to have this super gain. Mm-hmm. Has it got amazing gain or is it more like the front to back? It's you're going to get four to five DB a gain, depending on how okay. it's built. Yeah. Um, but that's over over a standard vertical and again we all know you know 3 db is half the power or double yeah. power yeah. so you know if you're talking you're putting 100 watts into it at 5 db you're close to what uh, close to 600 watts or so yeah that's right so, yeah um you know it can make a big difference for a, a small pistol station when an amplifier mm-hmm. and when you add an amplifier to it all of a sudden yeah. it gets yeah. even bigger but bigger, yeah you can yeah. gain a front you know your front to back you know, ratio helps you eliminate you know stuff coming off the back it's going to reduce your noise level yeah. so you'll be able to hear the stations you're listening for Even and the other better. piece of that is directivity right so instead of waiting for my beam to rotate you know 90 degrees or 45 degrees whatever case it may be mm. however however quick that thing rotates i can stop transmit it switch it and i'm automatically in that direction instantly right? same thing with an eight way i mean and when you're talking mm. about a beam width of you know say 90 degrees or a little better, a little less. Yeah. I mean, that makes all the difference in the world, how fast you yeah. can get there. Right. Yeah. So it it's interesting. I mean, they're, they're cool arrays. Um, I've, I've been looking at different things for future QTH and, um, you know, beams on antennas on, on mass or on um, towers at my age, it's kind of like, you know, I really want to be climbing towers. Yeah. Um, and working on stuff, but you know, four square on the ground or even a two element on the ground or a three element on the ground. Yeah. Um, you know, can be interesting. Yeah. So a yeah. little bit easier to maintain. Well, you give up that, something yeah. to get the ease <laughs> yeah. of ease of maintenance. Uh, you get the fun as well. I remember, <laughs> uh, I said to Wendy, I don't know, uh, it was the wrong time of day <laughs> and, um, somebody on 40. So it was like, like daylight here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was getting dark, maybe, but it's, it's, I got a big signal from the US. I'm sure I was live streaming at the time. Big signal from the US. I thought, where the hell did he come from? So I thought, he's 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 got a lot of gear, this guy, <laughs> because <laughs> he's coming in hot. And I said, what do you what do you what do you got over there? You know, well, he was running his 1500 watts. He had, I think, a three or a four or four. This is on 40. Mm-hmm. Three or four element at 100 feet. Mm-hmm. And then another three or four element at another hundred feet. <laughs> yeah. And I told Wendy this, and she looked at me, and she doesn't know anything about what we do. She just said, "What is the fun of that?" Yeah. 
Yeah, it's... Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to, for two weeks, mm-hmm. and then it's like, well, I've done it now. Yep. You know, I've, yeah. it's great, and I have used. Uh, I built a home brew. It was four DX Commander poles before DX Commander was DX Commander, but it's effectively four DX Commander poles. I made a two element because a two element Yagi, you get very close to fifty ohms without. Mm-hmm. As soon as you start going to three, you get to match it better. And um, yeah, I was about 110 foot, and it was incredible. It really, was yeah, incredible. About five dB a gain in the direction you're pointing. Oh, yeah. Easy, yeah, 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 easy, and just you know. Anyway, yeah. Well, you so know, that, you have, that works well. You, you have the contesters, right? Yeah. Who want to score as many points as they can, and I'm I'm part of a couple different contesting yeah. teams. Uh, that, that's fine, but it's a yeah. DXer. My God, but a DXer. You know, when you're starting to you know, there's a guy in Florida and he's, he's got millions of dollars tied up in his station down there, KE five EE. And he can talk to anybody anytime he wants yeah. at any time of day. I mean, the yeah. guy's got, you know, stacked elements. He's got stacked eighties on you know, Yagi's. I mean, who has stacked 80 Yagi's? I mean, that's just crazy. Um, he's got four hex beams that are phased two over two. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, you know, there's hope for us yet though, Callum. If he can stack <laughs> yeah, yeah. two hex beams uh, over two hex beams, there's gotta be a way to phase DX commanders. We just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> That's for next time, ladies and gentlemen. You've had John Gendron and J Four C on the show. May the force be with you, and we will both see you next time. Seven three all. <laughs>